Hi guys. I was sitting here with Ava. She was combing my hair. It's pretty cool. It's pretty combed. Sorry guys. But anyways, um, I got word, literally heard him say go to Corinthians 5, start at 6, but Okay. We're starting Corinthians again, 5, and then we're starting on 6. Sorry, I had my doggy. Sorry, my doggy. Anyways, it says, Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens a whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be unleavened batched as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival. Not with the old bread leaven with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Not at all meaning that people of this world who are immoral or greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In this case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be your brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy. If they're an idolater, if they're a slanderer, if they're a drunk word or a swindler, do not even eat with such people. What business is it of mine to judge those outside of the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. Now, this word can, I mean, this is where our intuition and stuff comes in and, and where your connection with God is to understand this chapter for you. But um, before even thinking about conversation with the Lord, I was really just being quiet and like browsing online for swimwear. I'm going to be honest for me and Ava for this year, because I'm excited that the weather is getting nice and we are planning to spend a vacation together around my honeymoon, us three. And I want to go to the beach. There's like little lakes here, but I want to yeah. go to the beach beach. And so yeah, and swim, exactly. Yeah, and so we're thinking of heading to Maine, actually. I'm really excited. I've never been there. We're going to drive. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and then I started thinking about, I have a narcissistic family. Um, Bentley Oliver, get down. Bessie, get down. Hey, stop yelling so loud. Bent. Bessie. If I count, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble, you will count. One. Two. How come I have to count? Get downstairs. Get downstairs. You know better. Yeah, I really do. What were you getting into? I see you licking. Stop it. Sorry, guys. I have a baby. Dog. Well, he's not really a baby, but he's always my baby. Just like kids, right? <laughs> but anyways, um, there's been a lot of crazy things going on. And um, I always have to feel like I'm dumb and I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't, you know, have any effects on me. And I've gotten to a point in my life where I just want peace. So I'm not going to be okay with things that are disturbing my peace. And it may be selfish to some people, but at this point in my life, I am 32. At this point in my life, um, if you're not being peaceful, loving, and kind, you've got to go. If I can't trust you, you've got to go. Anything that disturbs my peace, I need it gone. I need it gone for my sanity. If I want to live a long life and raise my daughter the way I want to raise my daughter and decorate my house the way I want to decorate my house without people criticizing me or bashing me or competing with me or whatever, instead of just being in my life and loving us and contributing to that, then you have to go. 
and basically when he was telling me and verse 9 I wrote a letter not to associate with sexual moral people not that I'm meaning people of this world that are you know of this world but it says I'm writing to you even amongst your your family like those people who are associating in that you know who you tie yourself to who you affiliate yourself with is what uh, is gonna like be exposed to your kids for instance and if your ha your family's not healthy or they don't know how to treat you that's also letting the kids know that hey they can treat you like that they can talk to you like that you know so they maybe won't respect themselves enough to stand up for themselves and allow their partners to talk to them like that uh, they could start to talk to me like that and throw our relationship off balance when that's it all you have to do is be there and be loving to each other so if in your family anyone is exhibiting symptoms of a lower vibration I think that more than anything you should seclude yourself from them and um, let the Lord wash you in his Holy Spirit and his love and light for you in your life and continue to do good in your life and ex continue to show love but also um, be cautious with it you know it's a diamond right our love is a diamond so we're not just gonna go ahead and be like hey look at this diamond that's worth you know five million dollars look at it look at it and and you know not think that someone's not gonna take it you know knowing its value you know there are people that would take it right out of your hand and run and so they know how beautiful our hearts are and so sometimes their shadow aspects they allow those things to overrule them and they give in to the temptations they give in to their desires they get into that greed or envy and when they're in that energy, you can't be around them because as much as they love you, which is crazy, but as much as they love you, their darkness has overcome them in that moment. And then what happens is, is it'll keep lashing out at you and you can continue to be a good person. But until they do that inner work and that inner healing, until you know that they've changed, I think it's very important that you do keep your distance because if they're not right, that could come on you in different different ways, you know? And, and, and you can forgive an uncle, a dad, a sister, a brother, or whatever, you know, from doing sexual immoral things to you while you were a young person and you couldn't do anything about it. And you just also should be fully aware that there are darker things that they have had conquer them and take over in situations, right? So it's better just to keep yourselves from them. You can forgive people. And this is why I continuously say, like, forgive them, love them. You know, that's what we're here on this planet to do. But at the same time, you have to protect your heart. So I'm not saying not to not love, but love from a distance. There's, there's healthy boundaries. These are why boundaries are important, to protect your heart. It's um, something that controls your whole body, your, your blood flow to everything, okay? And we want to make sure that we're like consistently going, that there are no blockages energetically, physically speaking as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted that. And then I was like, okay, well, let's then go to Jeremiah 10 and we're finishing it here and it's... um. God and idols, it says, hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by the signs of the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel and they adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with a hammer and nails so it will not totter like a scarecrow in a concubine field. Um, it says, Their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. 
So again, there are so many people here that are tied to this idea of power and um, they put so much faith in, for instance, like their um, practices as to think that that's, that's what it's about. That's why I said spirituality is just awakening to the fact that there is no religion. Um, we're all on our own spiritual journey to grow and evolve. And sometimes, sadly, the best thing to do in life is to leave. And it doesn't have to be leave forever. And it's not even in a gross narcissistic way at all. It's a way of, I love you with all of my heart. I know I will continue to love you with all of my heart, even if you continue to hurt me and abuse me. So I'm going to choose in this moment to let God handle this situation so that he can heal me, so that he can heal you, and maybe we can grow from this. Rather, it's with different people, rather it's each on our own, or rather it's us coming together again, better and whole as people, as individuals. Okay, and you can carry a cross with you or tattoo a cross on you or fast during this period it doesn't make you any more any less worthy of what the lord has for you and what he thinks you're deserving of and we're all on a journey our own journeys no one is like you lord you are great and your name is mighty in power you sh who should not fear you king of the nations this is your due among the wise leaders of the nations <laughs> sorry and all their kingdoms there is no one like you they are all senseless and foolish they are taught by worthless wooden idols hammered silver is bought from tarshish and gold from euphaz what the craftsmen and goldsmith have made is then depressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the eternal King. When he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure its wrath. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my hair is great. <laughs> Tell them this. These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power, and he founded the world by his wisdom, and he stretched out the heavens by his understanding. And when he thunders, the waters in the heavens roars. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth, and he sends lightning with its rain, and brings out the wind from its storehouses. Everyone's senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols, and the images he makes are fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless and objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is portioned of Jacob is not like these. He is the maker of all things, including Israel, the people of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. 17 is the coming destruction. It says, gather up your belongings to leave the land. You who have lived under siege, for this is what the Lord says. At this time, I will hurl out those who live in this land. I will bring distress on them so that they may be captured. Woe to me because of my injury. My wound is incredible. Yet I said to myself, this is my sickness and I must endure it. My tent is destroyed. All its ropes are snapped. My children are gone from me and are no more. No one is left now to pitch my tent or to set my shelter. The shepherds are senseless and do not inquire of the Lord, so they do not prosper, and all their flock are scattered. Listen. The report is coming, a great commotion of the land of the north, and it will make the towns of Judah desolate, a haunt of jackals. And this is Jeremiah's prayer. My husband's coming in. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. 
It is not for them to direct their steps, discipline me, Lord, but only in due measure, not in your anger, or I or it will reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the peoples who do not call your name, for they have devoured Jacob, and they have devoured him completely and destroyed his homeland. These are just the tough words of his, um, he's being serious. Um, these are just the words to some can come off harsh um, about his discipline. But in the first scripture that we read in Corinthians 5 was basically like, who are you to like question me and what I choose to do to punish um, the people? And I am always like, you know, forgive them. I don't want them to go through anything. And then I try to send them a message and then they ignore me, my parents. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's fine. And I'm just like, but I love them. And it's God's way of being like, Shh, let me handle this situation. There are things going on beyond you, my, my understanding even. And he knows what he has to do and it may not be pretty. But I know that with him, I'm safe, I'm loved, I'm covered. And what he has to do to the people that are outside of the church is, is for him to do. And um, it's a little sad, but um, I think it's definitely a wake-up call. So if you're sitting in a place where you need to heal your heart, um, you, um, I would just start with like a spiritual bath. You don't have to do anything crazy special and go buy a bunch of stuff. Um, but start with um, putting the bottle of soap in your hand start pouring it on your loofah or washcloth and start just praying over it and then as you're washing and the water is like healing you rather you need to cry while you're washing you wash the bottoms of your feet your toe like everything wash it spiritual bath and i'm not telling you to scrub yourself like that and get obsessive compulsive and start peeling your skin no this is just a spiritual cleanse and what you're doing for the lord and you can even work on your crown okay and um yeah, um, really start um, focusing your energy on, on where it is, needs to be, okay? If it means that you need to focus more on your children, your wife, your partner, if you need to start focusing more on yourself, um, your body, your health, your spiritual, your mental, whatever it is. If you have to go into yourself to figure out what you need to do, now's the time because he's literally warning people to like wake up or shut up basically and he's tired of light workers um, praying for people to be covered that don't want to be And feeling bad and holding yourself back instead of doing what he needs you to do because you're wanting to stay back here when you're all the way up here. Or you're wanting to stay down here when you're all the way up here. You see that? Tug of war. God's trying to like get you out of this. Get you out of that. Take you to the next level. Everybody's supposed to be moving up. But if they don't want to, he's got to do what he's got to do to wake them up. And sometimes waking up isn't a pretty thing. We all say we want to be woke. No, it's it's a lot of inner healing. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of eternal work. Spiritual work is, is work. Expelling your inner demons and facing what you thought you wanted versus what, you, it got, what God has for you. Everybody goes through these things in life their friends with their family with their partner just with somebody so i hope you got something out of this video i'm gonna go ahead and let this go just because i'm gonna start cleaning up getting myself ready for tomorrow i got a long day okay but we love you guys i didn't mean for this video to be rude or like 
you better do this or else. But sometimes he's stern and he's like, hey, I'm going to, I'm letting you know I'm going to be, people are going to be going through it this season. But you can't interfere with me. They can't sit with you. I've got you and I've got them. But I've got you. I've got you sitting over here, right next to me. And I'm keeping an eye on you, so I'm letting you know that rather they're blood or not, if they are doing things that they shouldn't be, and I moved you out of there, you cannot allow them to come and sit with you. Okay. That's for somebody, and it's for me, but it's for somebody. All right, love you guys.